OK. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to this evening's Option Process uh, 2024 presentation evening. Um, if you've got any questions, please do pop them into the Q&A chat uh, that is um, accessible on the Teams uh, website. Pop them in there. We'll be moderating comments as they're coming in. Uh, we might leave some of the questions and answer more specifically the answers towards the end because they might be answered during the presentation. So without further ado, uh, my name is Mrs Moss. I'm the Associate Assistant Principal at Outer Academy um, and the aim of this presentation is to give you an overview of the process for options, uh, give you an overview of the options that are available to you give you a little bit of advice on how to make your choices as well. So our core curriculum that we offer for Key Stage 4 at Attleborough Academy includes the following English language, English literature, maths, science, PE, PSHE, and then either geography and history, and then either French or German. Uh, we do this with based around the EBAC qualification that um, is offered nationally. We will come into more about what the EBAC actually means. Uh, in terms of the options process, you essentially have four decisions to make. The first decision is whether you're going to decide between triple or double science. The second decision you need to make is whether you're going to choose between geography or history. The third decision is French or German. And then decision four is the option subjects. Um, I'll talk more about each of these decisions in turn. But there's a quick summary on the screen for you at the moment. So decision number one that you need to make, double or triple science. All students will be studying at least double science. Um, students can then opt to study for triple science. So the differences between the two in a nutshell are up on the screen. The double, which everybody will study, um, you will ex have an exam in both biology or all three of biology, chemistry and physics. However, those exam grades get combined into a uh, double award. So, for example, as it says on the screen at the moment, a five five is completed in our normal standard timetable sessions um, and it is tiered as well. So you will uh, sit either higher or foundation for all three of the subdivisions of science. The benefit of being a double award is that means that if you uh, are perhaps really good at biology and chemistry, but not so much at physics, then your uh, grade will be averaged out into the, uh, between the three of them to give you the two results at the end. For the triple award, uh, you will have separate um, individual papers one for biology, or what well, actually is three exams for biology, three exams for physics, and three exams for chemistry. That also means that uh, you will get three individual science grades and three GCSEs. So unlike the double, which gets averaged out to two GCSE grades, the triple will be a separate one for all three. Of course, this covers a lot more content so you do have extra science lessons to make sure that you complete all of that content in school time. Some people and some uh, misconceptions that are around the difference between double and triple is that triple science is really a wise choice for those who really enjoy science. However, triple science is not a requirement that you need to have studied that at A level or at university to go into certain professions um, of like medicine, for example. It's not a requirement that you have to have done triple science. You can still get onto those routes by doing the double. 
science teachers will be able to tell you a little bit more about each of the uh, um, differences and the options between the two of them, or Miss Colin, uh, the head of science, they'll be able to discuss with you to ensure that you're on the right route and whether triple science is actually the best for you. Um, I'm going to pause here just for a moment so you can have a conversation uh, within your family to decide whether you think you're likely to go onto the double route or the triple route and I'll start the presentation again in about 30 seconds time. OK, so decision number two. So this one is about geography or history. So students must choose either geography or history, but actually students are able to choose both. So they have to make a choice between geography or history as part of this decision two, but then they can pick up the other subject if they want as one of their option choices. Um, there are a large amount of skills and crossover between the two subjects. As a head of geography, I feel like I should know that. So there's a lot of skills such as uh, taking in uh, and analysing sources, extended writing skills, etc. So they are quite, there's quite an overlap, so they do complement one another very well. But I'm going to pause the uh, presentation again just for another little quick decision. Do you feel that geography or history is right for you? Yeah. Whether you feel like you need to learn more about each of the subjects from uh, subject teachers or the videos that we have uh, in our options website. So just another 30 seconds discussion. Which one do you feel you're going to take? OK, right. Decision three to make is French or German. So students must choose either French or German. For the vast majority of our students, this will be whatever language they're currently studying in year nine. Obviously, just like the geography and history uh, split, students are able to choose both French and German if they did so wish. Um, I'll pause the video here for you to have a discussion on that. OK, that one's likely to have been quite a short conversation because it will likely be what you're already studying. The fourth decision that you need to make is your options preference. 
So students will be choosing three main preferences and a reserve preference. Um, you'll get two of your options from that selection. So this can include the other geography or history or French or German um, that might not have been chosen in decision two and decision three. Um, and you can choose either product design or graphics products, but not both as the, the examination boards essentially say that the skills set for both of them cancels one another out. So um, that's not an us thing, that is a national thing. It is either one or the other. Um, choose flexible intervention after a conversation with Miss Whitaker and all of the pastoral support team that's around you as well. More information about flex intervention will be coming up later in the presentation. And this year we have got two new GCSE subjects. So these are new for 2024. Um, it's photography and health and social care. I uh, feel like we're stressed at this point. This is a subject to then running to receiving enough applicants wanting to run them. So they are being offered. If we get enough take up, it is likely that they will indeed run. The other options that you have got are the ones that you probably are all already aware of. So art and uh, design, business, citizenship, computer science, creative eye media, and graphics and product design, drama, flex, hospitality and catering. Uh, some of you might refer to it as food tech, um, but the qualification itself is actually hospitality and catering. We have French, Geography, German, History, Media Studies, different to iMedia. Again, look at the options booklet for what the differences in those two subjects actually is. Music, Religious Studies, Physical Education, and then the two new ones, Photography and Health and Social Care. At this point, again, I'm going to pause again, probably a little bit longer this time because there's lots of options there. Which ones would you put down as your preferences? have a discussion with your families and I'll see you back here in one minute. OK, right, moving on. Hopefully that's enough time for you to have a discussion about each one of those. Moving on, I said I was going to talk a little bit more about what flex actually is and the flexible intervention that we offer. Um, this is a targeted support um, that we uh, put students on that we feel are best supported by this intervention. The focus of it is literacy, um, although numeracy does come into it as well. But we believe strongly that supporting students in extra literacy and numeracy actually has wider positive impact on every subject that they are doing, even the most practical subjects. As we'll come on to discuss, all subjects have a final exam with a written piece. 
So making sure that students are given this extra support helps everywhere. Um, we'll normally let you know if we think this is the pathway that you should be considering, but you are more than welcome to contact Miss Whisker um, about this or again the pastoral wider support team. And please do discuss it if you think it is something that you are going to need due to the, um, the rigour of exams and all of the options um, that you might have to choose. Uh, but it is something that only a small number of our students actually need to do. And there won't be that many students taking this route. But we are open, obviously, to discussions on this. All of this wraps up into an example of what a typical Attleborough student will be studying at Key Stage 4. So we have our core subjects, English Language, English Literature and Maths. Everybody will be doing them. Everybody will be doing core PE and PSHCE. Um, you will be then doing your science. So for example, combined science will go in for your decision one. Your decision two is whether you're doing geography or history. The third decision you are making is whether you're doing French or German. And then lastly, your full offer will be filled up by your final decision um, of the final two option blocks that are part of decision four. So remember, part of decision four, you're actually putting forward uh, three choices that you definitely really want to do and then a reserve choice of which you will uh, get two from that to fill up your full offer. So what's on the screen at the moment is all the subjects that a student might end up taking. Things to think about in, the few, uh, in, in this decision making process is the option subjects that you choose are not normally direct impact on your future jobs. Employers when they're looking at CVs for example are more likely to focus on looking at core which everybody does um, however, saying that, it might well impact the A-level choices that you want to go on to because some A-levels do state that they want certain GCSEs to be taken to be getting onto those courses. Um, better GCSE results will give you more choice, uh, a provider for your next steps of education or employment. Um, it's likely that your performance in those GCSEs, so the grades that you get, are likely to be noted moreover than the subjects that you have taught. Your performance is likely to be looked at more. Um, there are some A-level student uh, subjects, sorry, like I said already, that do insist on certain GCSEs. Um, and if you are thinking that university is a choice for you, I know it's a long way off and the scary thing to be thinking of, but maybe it's the A-levels that you do that determine what universities you get onto. So you do need to almost think back to what you might want to do in the future for the GCSEs that you choose to do at the moment. So have a research, find out what you might want to do, but that's no means to say that because you've chosen certain GCSEs now, it's going to close doors to you in the future. Because we all know that things change, our personal preferences change about what we enjoy. And it doesn't mean that what you've chosen now is going to dictate everything that you're going to be doing in the future. It just might help you along your route to that. Um, some have asked about whether we or why we have to do humanity and a language. And I said at the beginning that we'll be talking about the EBAC. So the English Baccalaureate um, is government. Uh, idea to make sure that um, everybody's got a wide range of subjects under their belt. So uh, making sure that you've got English, maths, science, a language and a humanity. So what you can see across there in the blue squares. Um, there is more information about the EBAC in the booklet, but here's a quick summary. So they help with the soft skills that employers look for, such as communication and empathy. As I said, it guarantees that students have covered a wide range of um, academic subjects as well as more uh, vocational or technical subjects. They're making sure that they're not pigeonholed into one certain route. Um, and it is likely that the EBAC is going to become much more of a normal thing. So it says on there about the target that 90% of students 
leaving from their GCSEs by 2025 have got um, the EBAC qualification, 90% of them. Therefore, it might be a disadvantage in the future if students haven't followed this route, as that would be an expectation of what students um, achieve. Our offer of um, an option route and everything that I've just talked through with all those decisions, make sure that students do indeed follow that EBAC route. So that's automatically kind of under your belt if you follow the standard offer that we give here at Attleboro. And people also ask about technical and vocational subjects. So um, there's no real difference in a, a traditional GCSE versus a BTEC or um, technical courses. There's no difference in the status that they have. Um, some of these subjects, they want will be ones that have more practical units attached to them. Um, uh, so, for example, sport, there will be assessments going through about um, how well students can train, etc. Um, but all subjects, regardless of whether they're practical or not, all of them will have a final exam at the end of the GCSE. So, um, usually that and there will be a written element to that. They're all fully recognised and respected and it's not a barrier to be doing these subjects um, for access into further and higher education. They're all equally recognised nowadays. So, How to make your decisions, some do's and don'ts. Things to do. Make sure that you read all the information in the options booklet and watch the videos. No one is being asked to choose their options tonight. You won't get the sheet to fill in and more about that process in a minute, but nobody is getting that form to fill in for several weeks. So take the time to have conversations uh, with your family, research the information, get as much help as you can from the people around you to decide what you want to do and what are the likely is the best for you and your outcomes. If you're still struggling, come and talk to us. Yeah? Don't just hope for the best now, that'd be OK. Uh, there isn't a rush for this. So don't choose the subject because of the teacher. We can never guarantee who's going to be in front of you in terms of um, the, the teacher. Even if one teacher teaches that subject, that's not to mean that they might not go off for whatever reason. So don't choose it because of the teacher. Also, don't choose it because your friend has done so. We often see it that students decide that they want to do it because their mate has, but actually that's not the thing that they are best at. <coughs> Sorry. And don't rush. <coughs> Sorry. Apologies, sorry, got a tickly throat. But please don't rush the decision because sometimes it can be impossible to change that decision later. Right, apologies. What to do next? So after this presentation, it will appear for you to watch back if you do so wish on our website. Uh, if you click on curriculum, select GCSE option process 2324, it will all appear on there. Already on there is the options booklet and all the videos for all those individual subjects, including core. 
for you to watch so you have more detail about what is in each of the courses. So the process. So Wednesday, today, this presentation is going to go live. It'll be on the website probably tomorrow. I need to make sure that it's uploaded. And next week, loads of you have already been booking for parents evening. And this is your chance to discuss with your subject teacher whether you are suitable for that subject going ahead. So talk to your science teachers about whether you think you should be on double or triple. Talk to your language teacher um, if Sorry, talk you to to your language teacher about you know whether you're going to be doing French or German. For most of you, it will be what you're currently studying anyway. Wednesday, the twenty eighth of February. So after half term, you will have a face to face conversation with your form tutor to discuss what your intended choices are. They'll have all the information that you already have on Go for Schools about. Um, your progress in different subjects and it's an opportunity for you to have a conversation about which route you're likely to be taking. Booking for that will be online just like it is for the um, online parents meetings next week, but it will be face to face. Thursday the 29th students will be emailed a link to a form to submit their preferences. But this is not first come first serve. So there is no advantage to submitting your preferences early. It is making sure that you have thought about it properly. There will be a deadline for submitting those options. And that will be the 22nd of March. But all students will have a follow up conversation uh, with Mr Evans. Uh, Mr Skipper or Mr Leeds about their choices to make sure that they're on their on the correct path for them. As I'm sure you could imagine, there are some students that might not be able to get the exact preferences that you want. This is really rare, though. I should stress that. But to coordinate in the background, the option for 150 students is a big task. Um, students need to be blocked into classes and teachers, and sometimes those options just don't fit. But we want to stress that we work with you to resolve any potential clashes if this does arise. And it will certainly be done with you and not to you. So please don't worry that you'll be going into a group of subjects that you'll be going to be forced into. And as I said, it's really rare for students not to be getting their um, option choices that they've put in the top three or their reserve. So. Over the next few weeks, read the options booklet. Watch all the videos that are online, including the ones for core subjects. Make sure you understand what's coming up for those important GCSE years. Speak to your subject leaders, your teachers, reform tutors, and discuss your choices with your parents and carers. If you have any queries about the process, you contact Mr Skipper, head of Key Stage 3, Mr Needs, your head of year, Mr Evans, who's overseeing all of this, and I feel he needs a bit of a shout out at the moment. Uh, Mr Evans has messaged me to say he's meant to be doing this, but he has recently had a new little baby boy. So yesterday he welcomed him into the world, but Mr Evans is eager enough to know what's going on. But apparently he says he wants a big shout out because he's currently on Blakeney Ward with the new little Bobby and his wife. So congratulations, Mr Evans. There's your shout out. <clears throat> and continuing back on with the presentation itself, if you want to talk about Flex, uh, you can contact Mrs Whitaker and anybody in the student support team um, and the people that are listed above there as well. And it's only uh, over to Flex. Um, oh, sorry, over to say thank you. Um, for all of your um, 
kind ears at listening to the presentation and I hope that you have been able to um, get answers to your questions. I'm just going to um, go to the message board to see what has been posted. Um, so if you want to hang around to hear some responses, I'm going to be here to see uh, what questions have been posed. Um, so on the message board, uh, Mr. Cole has been diligently fielding responses and I feel that I'm just going to read a couple of them out. Um, PSHE and PE are part of our statutory subjects. There's not a qualification in PE. Um, it is only chosen as an option. Likewise, for, P uh, uh, for PSHE, um, again, it's not qualified, but it does involve our kind of wider curriculum responsibilities um, for making sure that students uh, have knowledge of wider world events and um, things like how to look after themselves in the wider world. Uh, yes, flex counts as an option. Again, it's only for those bespoke people that we feel actually need to be on that route. Again, have a conversation with us if you feel that that's the route that is needed. Um, the options booklet, the next comment that I've got, I can see here. Um, the options booklet is online at the moment. Um, it's on the website. The recording of this event will be on there as well. So thank you, Mr. Cole, for feeding that. Um, all the, and as I said, all the videos will be on there as well. They are already there for you to watch. Likewise, if you uh, go to YouTube and you search Attleborough Academy, all the videos are actually on YouTube as well for you to go and watch because that's actually where the videos are hosted. So yeah, head to YouTube, search Attleborough Academy, look at all the videos that we have posted up on there. You'll see all the option videos as well. Um, uh, lots of people asking about doing a language, as you said, um, it is an expectation of our core curriculum that, that students will be offering or will be studying a language. Um, it will only be for students that we feel are um, best to have a different form of intervention um, that will go into that. Again, it's part of our discussion, but the expectation is that the majority of our students will take our core offer up and that does include a language. Um, I think quickly scanning over the questions that that might be all of them. I've got a couple of new posts up at the top. Um, <coughs> uh, so we will get in contact with you in due course if we feel that flex is the option that you need to take. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch with you about that in the next few weeks. Um, again, somebody's been asking about MFL. Again, it will be a part of the conversation about where, where, whether we feel that it's best for them. The language department are um, heavily involved in that decision as well. So you put down the options that you feel. Please do pick one of the languages though as part of that option. We will have follow up discussions with you as to whether that is the correct route for you. And then lastly, Mr Evans, lots of congratulations messages for you coming through as well. Uh, next question I've got up here is about um, doing languages Portuguese. Yes, you can do that. We often um, allow those that have uh, a foreign language as their first language. They often do that in addition to their other languages. It won't be forming part of your option box, so that's often in addition to. But again, talk to us more about it individually um, at the face to face meeting. We can certainly discuss it then.
Um, and another question, flex um, for those with who struggle with literacy like dyslexia. Yes, it is, although um, it's not solely solely for that. And being dyslexic doesn't mean that you automatically will be in flex. Um, so we have support elsewhere. OK, um, I can, can't see that any new messages are coming in. Um, of course, if we haven't managed to respond to your message as it's popped up, then do get in contact with us again, Mr Skipper, Mr Needs, Mr Evan, uh, or your form tutor will be able to help you. I hope you found this evening informative and good luck in your decision making. And we'll see you at school tomorrow. Good evening.